السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله uh, we will uh, be doing the Kitab Al-Tawheed by the Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan Hafizahullah Ta'ala we are doing the chapter on the statements and actions that go against or diminish Al-Tawheed, the monotheism. Uh, the last section that we went through was belonging to the deviant methodologies and ideologies, uh, the atheistic uh, ones, and also the parties parties that have the understanding and the beliefs and the actions of the jahiliya, the ignorant uh, practices of the pre-Islamic era. This time the Sheikh speaks about how people view this worldly life. النظرة المادية للحياة ومفاسد هذه النظرة أو النظرية المادية للحياة ومفاسد هذه النظرية the uh, materialistic type of theory or look into or view of the worldly life and the corruption of this type of a view or this type of a theory the sheikh says that there are two ways uh, into uh, looking into this worldly life a look that is materialistic and a look that is uh, or a view that is a correct one and each of these two different types of views or looks into the worldly life uh, each one of them has its own consequences or have its own results and effects as for the materialistic type of a view or a look or analysis then uh, what it means is that the thinking of the human would be restricted restricted to achieving uh, his swift or immediate uh, enjoyments and his actions also would be restricted in this range just how to achieve more and more of the worldly joys or how to enjoy himself more and more his thinking would not go beyond uh, what is behind this of the evil consequences so uh, he does not act and he does not give due regard and he doesn't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this worldly life as a farm مزرعة, for the next life. So the thinking of this type of people who look into or view this worldly life to be just a, a place of enjoyment, right? they restrict themselves to only this, they don't think about what is after that. They only work to achieve those worldly materialistic joys or uh, desires or enjoyments. So those people don't know that Allah made this worldly life as resembling a farm, mazra, the farm you plant the seeds in it in order for you to get the fruits later on. So this worldly life is like a farm for the next life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this worldly life a place of deeds and actions. Dar amal is a home, is a place for us to work. وَجَعَلَ الْآخِرَةِ دَارَ جَزَاءِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the next life a place or a home for the reward. 
So the one who takes benefit or seizes the opportunity of his worldly life by doing righteous deeds, then he will win both worlds, both places. Right? While the one who made his worldly life a place of loss, and he lost it, he lost his worldly life, meaning into enjoyments and the materialistic type of view, then his next life will be lost too. So he wasted his life, his worldly life, in things that are not important, just desires and fulfilling his desires. And because of that, he lost also his next life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خسر الدنيا والآخرة ذلك هو الخسران المبين Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 11. He lost the worldly life and the next, that is the crystal clear loss, manifest loss. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create this worldly life عبثاً for no purpose, in vain. Rather, خلقها لحكمة عظيمة Allah created this worldly life for a great wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عمل سورة الملك آية number two the one who created death and life to test you who as to who amongst you is best in good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said inna ja'alna ma ala al-ardi zinatan laha linabluwahum ayyuhum ahsanu amala surah al-kahf ayah 7 surely we made what is on earth as a beautification as adornment for it as adornment for the earth that is in order to test them who amongst them is best in doing good deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought this worldly life to existence uh, and he brought within it of the immediate or swift uh, enjoyments and adornment, beautification, that is outward beautification of the wealth, the children, uh, jah, and his status, sultan, authority, and the rest of the enjoyments. Sa'ir al-mustaladhat, ma la ya'lamuhu illa Allah, that nobody knows except Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who made this worldly life and he made within this worldly life these different types of enjoyments, adornments, beautifications. So amongst the people are those, the Shaykh said, and they are the most, al-akthar. Amongst the people are those who restrict their look, who restrict and limit their look and their examination, their view of this worldly life. They limit that to the superficial type of things and the mafatin, the beauties, the uh, temptations. They restrict, they restrict themselves to only these. Uh, he would enjoy himself with these enjoyments. He did not reflect, he did not ponder, he did not examine the secrets behind those enjoyments that are there. So he got busy by uh, achieving those worldly pleasures, gathering them and uh, enjoying himself with them. And he got busy with that over working to what comes after the worldly life. Yani this worldly life will end and it will have something after it. So he is busy with this worldly life and he do does not think about what's after it. Rather, the Sheikh said, Ankara an yakuna hanaka hunaka hayatun gayraha. Rather, he denied this person of a materialistic view of this worldly life. He denies that there will be a life other than it, other than this worldly life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَالُوا إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَبْعُوثِينَ Surah Al-An'am 29, they said, it is nothing but our worldly life. We are not going to be resurrected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatened 
the one who has this type of a view for the worldly life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْزُونَ لِقَاءَنَا Those who do not hope to meet us. وَرَضُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا And they are satisfied with the worldly life. وَطْمَأَنُّوا بِهَا And they are completely comfortable, they are completely at peace with it, with this worldly life. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا غَافِلُونَ And those who are from our signs, they are heedless, they are unaware, they are neglectful, negligent. أُولَٰئِكَ مَأْوَاهُمُ النَّارُ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Such their abode will be the fire because of what they used to earn, what they used to do. Surah Yunus 7 and 8. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا The one who wants the worldly life and its adornment, its beauty. نُوَفِّ إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ We will give them their deeds or their re the reward of their deeds in it in full. In this worldly life that is. They will be fully rewarded in this worldly life. And they are in it, that's living in this worldly life, لا يبخسون. They will not be diminished. They will not be reduced anything from their reward. Allah says after that, أولئك الذين ليس لهم في الآخرة إلا النار Such are the ones who, whom they will have nothing in the next life except the fire. وحبط ما صنعوا فيها Whatever deeds they have done in it, in this worldly life, is abolished. All the deeds are abolished, are destroyed. وباطل ما كانوا يعملون. What they have done is completely invalid, invalidated. This is in Surah Hud, Ayah 15 and 16. Now this type of threat includes the people who have this materialistic view of life. أصحاب هذه النظرة. Whether they are from those who do the deeds of the next life and they want by it the worldly life, like the hypocrites, those who show off with their deeds, or whether they are from the disbelievers who do not believe in a resurrection, uh, they do not believe in being held accountable, hisab, they don't believe in reckoning, like the case of the people of Jahiliyyah, pre-Islamic era beliefs, uh, the people of Jahiliyyah and the people of Al-Madhahib al haddama the people of the destructive types of ideologies, methodologies, whether they are Mirra'ismaliyya, whether they are capitalist, Shiuiya, communist, Al-Almaniyya, uh, secularist, al uh, atheistic type of ideologies. So this threat that is mentioned in the Quran here for those who want the worldly life who will be given enjoyment as they want in this worldly life it includes the hypocrites. The hypocrites and the ones who show off they do good deeds but their good deeds are not deemed to be good deeds. They, are, they look like good deeds, but they are not. Why? Because they want with their good deeds or the deeds that look good <laughs> that they do, they want by them not the reward from Allah. They want only to show off. Also, it includes the disbelievers who don't believe in a next life. The Sheikh says, وَأُولَٰئِكَ لَمْ يَعْرِفُوا قَدْرَ الْحَيَاةِ وَلَا تَعْدُوا نَظْرَتُهُمْ بِهَا أَن تَكُونَ كَنَظْرَةِ الْبَهَائِمِ Those, they did not really know the value of this worldly life that Allah created. They don't know the value of it. And their look, their look and their view of this worldly life does not go beyond or does not even pass the look or the view of the animals yani to this worldly life rather 
The Sheikh says, Hum adallu sabila. They are more astray than the animals, meaning. That is because they have cancelled their uh, minds, they have cancelled their intellects, uqul, and they subjected their energies, whatever abilities Allah has given them, they put all of these abilities and energies and they wasted their times in that which لا يبقى لهم ولا يبقون له they wasted their time and energy in something that will not stay that will not remain for them and they also don't remain for it يعني the worldly life you enjoy it it won't stay for you forever and you yourself you will not stay to live in forever right so those people they cancelled their uh, intelligence and they invested all of their time and efforts and energies into something that will not last for them and they themselves will not last for it and that is the worldly life it will either finish on you or you will finish on it <laughs> right he said they did not do deeds lam ya'malu they did not work for their abode that is awaiting them limasirihim alladhi yantadhiruhum wa la budda lahum min they did not work for their abode that is awaiting them and they have no running away from uh, it. He says, al bahaim the animals, it does not have an end that, uh, uh, that is awaiting them. And they do not have intellects by which they will think. Unlike those humans, right? The animals, yani they will not have an abode like the fire or paradise, <laughs> right? They do not have that abode and they do not have minds to think with. Unlike those humans. That's why he's saying they are worse than their, their view. Resembles the view of the human, the, the view of the animals. You know, the animals, they just eat, drink and live until they die. Rather, he says they are worse than the animals. Because the animals, they don't have a, a destination that they will go to in the next life, like a paradise or a hellfire, while the humans do. Uh, he says, وَلِهَذَا يَقُولُ تَعَالَى فيهم, This is why Allah says regarding them, that is, those who have this materialistic type of a look to the worldly life, Allah says, أَمْ تَحْسَبُوا أَنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ أَوْ يَعْقِلُونَ إِنُّهُمْ إِلَّا كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْهُمْ أَضَلُّوا سَبِيلًا Surah Al-Furqan, ayah number 44. Or do you think, O Muhammad وسلم, or do you think that most of them hear or understand they are nothing but like an'am, like cattle. Rather, they are more astray. They are like cattle they are even more astray. And the Sheikh explained that the cattle, the animals, they just, they don't have minds to think. They eat and drink. So, so they are like them in terms of investing all of their times and efforts into the materialistic world. Rather, they are far astray than them because the animals, they don't have the intellects to think and they don't have you know a punishment in the end right they don't have a punishment in the end but they do they do and even what is mentioned about uh, the hushirat, and the animals and the, they, they all will be gathered together on the day of judgment as mentioned in the Quran they are gathered together but this is part of the scary scene of the next life and also, يُقْتَصُّ لِلشَّاتَ الْجَلْحَاءَ مِنَ الْقَرْنَاءَ يعني If there were two sheep, one of them is horned, the other one is not, and the horned one hit 
the unhorned, they will be held accountable on the day of judgment. Again, not because these animals will go to the fire or to paradise, but it is part of the justice that will happen on the day of judgment. And it is very scary because even those animals, they will be judged. Right? So if the animals will be judged like that, what do you think about the humans and what will happen to them? That's why after they are judged, those animals, it will be said that they will be turning into dust. Because justice is served and that's it. They will be turning into dust and that's how the disbeliever will say, Ya laytani kuntu turaban. I wish I was dust. Right? Like he would wish that he was like animals so he wouldn't have to go through the punishment in the fire. طيب. The Sheikh goes on to say وَقَدْ وَصَفَ اللَّهُ أَهْلَ هَذِهِ النَّظْرَةِ بِعَدَمِ الْعِلْمِ Allah described the people who have this type of a materialistic look. He described them that they don't have knowledge. They don't know. بِعَدَمِ الْعِلْمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most people do not know. يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِّنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ Surah Ar-Rum 6 and 7. They know only something that is the outward, the superficial thing of this worldly life. And they are from the next life, they are negligent. They are heedless. They are unaware. So they, the Sheikh says, even if they are people of expertise, Ahlu Khibra, Fil Mukhtara'at was Sina'at, they are people of expertise, they are experts in terms of inventions and in terms of products that they produce, that they make, that they manufacture. Hmm? Then, although they are like that, they are Juhal, they are ignorant people. لا يستحقون أن يوصفوا بالعلم. They do not deserve to be described as having knowledge. That is because their knowledge did not go beyond the outward, superficial part of this worldly life. هذا علم ناقص الشيخ. This he says this is a knowledge that is deficient. The knowledge they have. Is deficient. لا يستحق أصحابه أن يطلق عليهم هذا الوصف الشريف. That the people who have this type of knowledge, this is a deficient type of knowledge. They do not deserve to have this noble description as having knowledge. Right? They don't. Right? They do not have knowledge. He goes on to say, فيقال العلماء يعني they shouldn't be deserving. The title, the scholars, al-ulama, right? وَإِنَّمَا يُطْلَقْ هَذَا عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ مَعْرِفَةِ اللَّهِ وَخَشْيَتِهِ This title of the scholars is only used for the people of the knowledge of Allah and the people who fear Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء Their only fears Allah from His servants, the scholars. Surah Fatir Ayah 28 The Shaykh goes on to say من النظر المادية للحياة الدنيا ما ذكره في قصة قارون وما آتاه الله من الكنوز From this materialistic look and view of this worldly life is what Allah mentioned in the story of قارون and what Allah has given him of the treasures فخرج على قومه في زينته He went out to his people in his adornment and whatever beautification he had when he went out to them. قَالَ الَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا Those who want the worldly life said, يَا لَيْتَ لَنَا مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ قَارُونَ We wish that we have the likes of what Qarun has been given. إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ Surely he is ذو حَظٍ one who possesses a share that is azim, great. Dhu havin, right? Marfu'a, right? In the state of Rafa. Those who are doing the. Dhu havin, dhu malin, dhu fadlin, and dhu 
حظ عظيم حظ means a share a portion ذو حظ right so ذو here is in a state of رفع nominative case right for those who are doing <laughs> داج الرومية ذو حظ عظيم so that's what those who whose aims whose hearts are only directed towards the worldly life the worldly pleasures they looked at Qarun when he came out with all of this adornment that he has they said we wish we have like him he is really one who has a, a great portion a great share that is of the worldly life so tamannaw mithla they wished to have like him وغبطوه they envied him ووصفوه بالحظ العظيم they described him as having a great share a great portion this is based upon نظرتهم المادية this is based upon them having this materialistic type of look type, materialistic type of analysis for this worldly life وهذا كما هو الحال الآن في الدول الكافرة وما عندها من تقدم صناعي واقتصادي The Sheikh says that this is now the same situation now in the uh, countries that are disbelieving countries, the disbelievers and what these countries have of advancement in terms of manufacturing, production and in terms of economy for the weak uh, amongst the Muslims the Muslims who have weak faith the Muslims who have weak faith they look to them a look of admiration they look at them a look that is a look of admiration they admire what they have دون نظر إلى ما هم عليه من الكفر وما ينتظرهم من سوء المصير without looking at what they are upon of disbelief and what is awaiting them of the evil abode the evil abode so this wrong look this wrong analysis this wrong view will lead them will يعني take them to a position where he says تعظيم الكفار واحترامهم they will now because of this materialistic type of look to the worldly life for of these weak Muslims right يعني some of them are openly يعني you know those countries that have the Arab Springs some of them are talking you know we have so much chaos here we need those Europeans to come and do something for us here without that it doesn't work this is how they are talking oh, openly you hear this openly from you know those white people they come and they look after things you know here because we cannot do it on our own right this is how they are talking right so this is because of the materialistic look of this worldly life it will lead them to aggrandize to glorify the disbelievers and to have so much respect for them within their souls احترامهم في نفوسهم and التشبه بهم في أخلاقهم وعاداتهم السيئة and to imitate them in their behavior in their morals and their bad habits and their evil habits and they did not the Sheikh says لم يقلدوهم في الجد وإعداد القوة والشيء النافع من المخترعات والصناعات he said they did not imitate them in being serious and in terms of preparing the uh, uh, different type of strength and powers and the things that are beneficial of the inventions and the products they did not uh, imitate them in those uh, يعني matters one uh, poet he said يعني, sarcastically منهم أخذنا الناية والسيجارة وما عرفنا نصنع الطيارة <laughs> right? 
we took from them a nai, which this is one of the musical instrument, and the sijara, you know, the, <laughs> the cigarette. And we did not know how to make an airplane, right? So those bad things, we take them, but then we don't take the good things. Those people, yes, at the same time, we criticize the way they, their beliefs and their morals and the way they look to this worldly life. We know, on the other hand, that they are serious about what they are doing for their worldly life because they work for a life that they believe it will finish right there. When I die, that's it. So you have to be serious about your life and make use of every moment of it. This is how they think. That's why they, you know, come up with a lot of inventions and make money and so on and so forth. They're serious. On the other hand, the Muslims or the weak uh, Muslims, they only adopt the bad things and they don't use, they don't adopt or benefit from the good things and uh, they might look at this materialistic uh, advancement that the non-Muslims have and they might think that this يعني, is because of what they are upon. So they take from them even their beliefs and their morals and the way, the ideologies that they have about this worldly life. Now the Sheikh says uh, that was the, about the first type of a look and he says there is the second type of a look and this is the correct view of this worldly life and that is for the human to uh, consider what is in this worldly life of wealth, uh, mal, sultan, authority, quwa uh, maddiya, materialistic power or strength he has to look at them or consider them as a means, wasila, a means yustaanu biha li amali al-akhirah, that he will seek help with those means of those materialistic things. He will seek the help with that to do deeds for the next life, to work for his next life. Fadunya fil haqiqa la tudhammu li dhatiha. The worldly life, in reality is not dispraised in of itself. It's not bad because it's bad. Right? إنما يتوجه الذم والمدح أو المدح والذم إلى فعل العبد فيها The praise or the dispraise is only directed to the actions that the human does in this worldly life. Right? As the worldly life itself is not dispraised. It's actually, as he mentioned before, is like an investment for the next life. A farm in which you plant in it your good deeds and you harvest where? In the next life. <laughs> right? That's why the Muslim does not wish, does not wish to die. The Muslim does not wish to die. You don't ask death. <laughs> it's prohibited to ask that. And if you are in a situation where there's so much trials and so many temptations, you fear for your religion, even in that case, you don't ask death. You say, Ahini ma damatil hayatu khayran li. Right? You ask Allah that you to give you life as long life, as long as life is better for you and to cause you to die when death is better for you. This is how you ask. This is how we are taught to say, to make dua like this, not to wish death, right? Because the more you live, if you are doing good deeds, then the more you achieve and the better you're, you will be harvesting and you will have more harvest, more fruits in the next life. So he says that the worldly life is not this praise worthy in itself, but the praise or this praise is going to be directed towards the deeds that the human will do in this worldly life. For it is qantara wa ma'bar lil akhirah. 
the worldly life is a bridge qantara is a bridge and it is ma'bar it is a passage that you pass through a bridge that you walk on to the next life he said وَمِنْهَا زَادُ and from this worldly life is the provision for paradise فَهِيَ دَارُ الْجِهَادِ it is the home of striving salah, praying, siyam, fasting الْإِنْفَاقُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ spending in the way of Allah وَمِضْمَارُ التَّسَابُقِ إِلَى الْخَيْرَاتِ it is the track it is the race track on which you race with one another you compete one another with one another in doing good deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the people of paradise كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا أَسْلَفْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَّامِ الْخَالِيَةِ Surah Al-Haqqa, ayah number 24, meaning الدنيا, يعني the worldly life. Allah says, eat and drink, and Allah is congratulating them, and is telling them, you know, enjoy, and let this eat the food and drink, let it be blessed for you, هَنِيئًا. That is bima asleftum because of what you used to do previously in those days that has gone that have gone that passed, meaning the days of the worldly life. So, in this second chapter, which deals with statements and actions that go against or diminish at tawhid, the belief of the oneness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is this type of materialistic look to the worldly life right which is originally should not be for the muslim it should be for the non-muslims but then the muslims who believe in the tawheed of allah azawajal, they have fallen into imitation of the non-muslims in this regard where they only yani, look and view this worldly life to be a life of enjoyment and a life of fulfilling your desires right although they're supposed to believe in the next life but then it's as if they don't right they imitate the non-muslims uh, in that regard and they are completely amazed they are completely uh, admiring the non-muslims for whatever materialistic achievements they uh, had right or they uh, accumulated طيب so uh, inshallah next week it will be regarding الرقى والتمائم again under the uh, section of or the chapter uh, statements and actions that go against or diminish التوحيد right so uh, just uh, came to my mind this issue of uh, glorification or too much يعني, looking up to the non-Muslims the Sheikh Umar Sulaiman Al-Ashqar Rahimahullah he mentioned one time uh, he was in uh, Kuwait I think and he saw that there was he was in the airport and there was one person who was looking into the airplane he wanted to see something you know just a little bit above and he cannot reach it right? just a, a foreigner a non-muslim so he said he asked someone to come a muslim and he had him bow down like in a doing ruku'ah and he went on top of his back to look at that thing then he went down and he went, came back, and gave him a watermelon for that service to ride to ride to go over his back. <laughs> right. So the Sheikh was saying, I cannot see how a Muslim can humiliate himself <laughs> to this point just for to be ridden, you know, <laughs> to give a ride to this person who's a non-Muslim on his back to do this type of a, a service. Right, but then it's the same, you know, this over, uh, yeah, respect that is overblown, right? 
overblown uh, to the non-Muslims and whatever materialistic types of things they have achieved and accumulated. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta.